Hello everybody, KWeb here, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Trials. In this week of trials, we have the map Emperor's Respite, and it is countdown for this weekend. And I'm just going to jump right into, first of all, weapon suggestions for this map. And I'm going to give my suggestions on what weapons to use kind of by portion of the map instead of in general this time. And so on this map, there's kind of three main lanes. There's the entry lane, there's the patio lane, just where like each of the bombs are. And then there's a middle lane. And so for the patio lane and the middle lane, these are very long lines of sight. They're the portions of the map that have quite limited cover. And because of that, on these portions of the map, this is when you're going to want your scout rifles. And that's going to be one of the most important weapons to be using, a strong scout rifle like the Mita Multi Tool, the Future War Cult Scout, the Nameless Midnight, scout rifles like that, they're going to be doing very well, they'll be excellent for team shotting. And when you're looking down the middle lane and the patio lane, it is going to be super beneficial having a scout rifle in those situations. And then you're going to want to pair probably an auto rifle or maybe a hand cannon with your scout at these parts of the map because it is pretty long range on those portions of the map and there are mid-range engagements you're going to be getting in as well. So having an auto, especially like a Prosecutor or Uriel's Gift, is going to be super good, and maybe a Better Devils or something could work well as well. Because you will have some mid-range fights, and so having weapons that are optimal for that range on those portions of the map will be a good thing to have. And then when you look at the entry portion of the map, at this side there's a lot more cover, a lot more things to hide around, and not really long lines of sight. So because of that, scout rifles aren't super necessary at that portion of the map. And you'll have a bit more close range fights with people than you do at the other portions of the map. So it might be smart to be having like a sidearm or a submachine gun, things that are really strong and you can optimize for their close range abilities when you're playing on this portion of the map. And then the strong mid-range weapons that I mentioned earlier will work well well in most of the situations on this side of the map. So in general, if you have strong close range and mid range weapons, then you probably want to be heading over to the entry side and try to take most of your fights over there because it's a bit more catered to your range. But if you think your team is strong in the longer range, you all have scout rifles on, then playing in the middle lane in the patio will work well for you. And then when it comes to power weapons on this map, I think fusions and shotguns are again going to be quite strong on this map. When you're playing around the bomb sites, these weapons can be extremely effective, and you'll have plenty of opportunities to use them. Uh, rocket launchers can also be a pretty solid option, especially if you take them into the middle lane or in entry, because those are areas that are like closed in, indoors, so it'll be a little bit harder for people to dodge your rockets maybe. Nade launchers I wouldn't really recommend, that you could probably make it work especially over on the entry side where things are a bit closer, but not going to be your greatest option I don't think. And then sniping, sniping could be alright in the middle lane and patio where there is a really long lines of sight, but because scout rifles are going to be used so much over there and there's so much flinch in this game with tons of people using Mido with high cow. Sniping can be a bit of a risk and I feel like you'll be a bit more powerful if you choose a different option for your power weapon. Now for my recommendations on subclasses starting out with Titans. I think the two best options are going to be Sentinel and Striker. I think Striker might have a little bit of an edge because they have Pulse Nades. As we know, Pulse Nades are amazing and their super can actually play a bit better on this map than the last one because there are a bit more opportunities to get into cover and more scenarios where you're really close to people. However, Sentinel could be a pretty solid option for you as well. You can throw on Suppressor Nades, maybe shut down some supers take away people's abilities, and your super should be pretty good on this map. There's a lot of close range scenarios, and when people do get a little bit too far, you can throw your shield and maybe pick up some kills doing that. And even throwing down like a bubble on a bomb site can be very, very strong. As long as the other team doesn't have like a Fist of Havoc or a Nova Bomb up, you could basically get a free round win by doing that, if that's something you want to do. Next for Warlocks, I think Stormcaller is going to be your best option. Again, they have Pulse Nades, they have Arc Souls, which will give you and your team some extra damage, make gunfights a bit easier, and your super should be pretty solid, especially if you bring it to the entry area of the map. And then for Hunters, I think it's between Arc Strider and Golden Gun. I might give a slight edge to Arc Strider for this week. I think having Arc Bolts as your grenade is a bit better than the grenades that Gunslinger can provide, not by a ton, but by a little. 
and I feel like those are going to play quite well on this map. Also, I think Arc Strider as a super will play a bit better on this map than it did on like Eternity the last two weeks, because this map isn't quite as big as that one, and there's a bit more cover that you can play off, so your super will be a bit better. And then Golden Gun seems like it might be a little bit worse than it was last weekend. I think it'll be a bit easier to hide from on this map. There's a bit more cover and areas that people can get away from you. So that one's a bit of a toss-up. I would maybe give a slight edge to Arc Strider. And then some last tips. If you are defending, coming to this middle lane as an entire team and watching that can be a smart thing to do. Because you will be able to see this middle lane first before the other team. And getting there first, if the attacking team does peek out, you should be able to take him down really easily. And if you don't see them there, you can just get close to this right side of the doorway and then just kind of play off radar, see which direction the enemy team is going. And then you can find out what that is as a team and go and collapse on whichever side they're going to as a full team of four. And then some advice for attacking, I think you really want to stick together as a team of four here, that will be very important. And when you want to push a bomb site, I think it will be smart to maybe go to the very edges of the map when you're doing that, because you'll be getting off people's radar a bit more, and will give them some looks that they won't always expect. And especially if you do go towards entry on attack, a lot of times you can look towards the middle and get some easy kills on your enemies that are in the middle lane and they won't always notice you, you'll be a little bit off radar. So that can be a good strategy to employ there. But anyway, that's going to be it for all my advice on this map. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and see you later.